Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Um, I'm very excited to talk about egg freezing tonight. Um, we, we're, it's something that we're at here at IRMS, Institute for Reproductive Medicine and Science at St. Barnabas, that we're really passionate about. Uh, we're a group of eight physicians, nine offices throughout New Jersey, and um, egg freezing is something we've been doing for decades. In fact, we have the only program that has, uh, has done um, IRB-approved research on egg freezing, and unlike many other programs, we actually have data on um, take-home baby rates, pregnancy rates. Egg freezing, the, the purpose for us to be here tonight is not to tell you that you should do egg freezing. The purpose is so you understand what it's about. And I think one thing that's really important is that it's, I, I like to tell my patients, it's about no regrets. That you want to get the information and you don't want to say 10 years from now, oh, I should have frozen my eggs or why didn't I find out about that? Um, we want you to know everything you can know so that you can make the right decision for yourself. So that you can say, you know, I know all about egg freezing. It's not for me or I know all about egg freezing and I'm going to do it. And this brings up a lot of, when people come to us about egg freezing, it's often not just about, really just about freezing eggs. It's kind of your life, what big decisions about your life. Um, you're thinking, you know, my biological clock is ticking. I haven't met the right person I want to parent with yet. What am I going to do about that? And for some women that means freezing their eggs and feeling good about having a backup plan. For some women that means maybe, you know, I want to think about being a single parent. For some women that means, you know, I've become informed, I know my options, egg freezing is not for me, but I know a place like IRMS at St. Barnabas will help me regardless of what path I choose. So, so why now? Why, why is egg freezing such a hot topic now? Number one, there's a big need. People, people really, our society, mother nature, wanted you to have 10 kids by the time you're 25 and die of exhaustion by age 35, that's how, honestly how our female biology is built. We're, we have the most eggs when we're a fetus, and then it's kind of downhill from there. Our peak fertility maybe is around 25 or so, and then um, we lose 1,000 eggs every month until finally around age 51 you're in menopause when you've run out of all your eggs. So peak fertility often doesn't coincide in modern day life with the best time to have a baby because a lot of women in the United States today are they're going to college, they have careers, and there's some interesting statistics that the number of births to mothers over 35 is now much greater than the number of births to mothers less than 20. Um, the birth rate for women aged 35 to 39 has increased since 1990 47%, 80% for women over 40. Um, so having your whole family early does not really fit into our current lifestyle. Very interesting statistic is that women, of course, are more in the workforce now. And delaying childbearing is money in the bank, literally money in the bank. If every year that you delay having a child means a 12% gain in your long-term salary. So it's, this is a big deal. Delayed childbearing is kind of a force in our society today, and yet Mother Nature is not cooperating. What do we do about that? So now this is why we're talking about egg freezing. Egg freezing is a great idea, like just press the pause button, keep the eggs um, when you're ready to use them later. The thing is, it's been like a wonderful idea for many years since in vitro fertilization was first invented in 1978, but it actually hasn't been practical until very recently. It was really only in 2012, 2013, that the American Society for Reproductive Medicine said egg freezing is good enough to do for every single cancer patient. And um, the data is good enough and the egg freezing technology is so much better. So, and why is that? Um, that's because it's been really difficult to freeze eggs. When you, normally when you freeze, you form ice crystals, sharp ice crystals, and eggs are some of the largest cells in the body. They're full of water. And when you freeze them, the problem is we've had problems not damaging the egg. So we've been able to freeze sperm. Sperm are very, very small compared to the egg. We've been able to freeze embryos, 
really well for a long time, but we have not been able to freeze eggs until recently. Um, so you can see this picture is um, very illustrative. You can see on the left is an egg. It's like one big bag of water. The little dots around the side are the little sperm. You can see how small the sperm are compared to the egg. Why are all those little sperm hanging around there? Well, those are all the loser sperm, okay? <laughs> they were trying to fertilize the egg and they lost the race. And then they, for some reason, they just stick around. They just stick their little faces to the window and they just, you know, they didn't make it. Um, the next, on the right, is an embryo. Um, it's a few hundred cells. It's the same size as the egg but now it's got a whole bunch of cells. So those are much smaller packets of water. So sperm and embryos have much smaller cells, much smaller packets of water. So when we froze them, um, we didn't have as much crystal formation and we got much better survival rates. Uh, but with eggs, we had a tremendous amount of difficulty freezing them because of so much water. The big word for today, and it happens to be Valentine's Day today, is a V word, vitrification. Vitrification has completely revolutionized the field of egg freezing. Vitrification is a process where we drop the temperature of the egg from body temperature down to negative 196 degrees centigrade, which is the temperature of liquid nitrogen, essentially just pausing the molecules in their tracks. They're just frozen in their tracks. They are, it's so quick that the molecules don't have a chance to form ice crystals. And then when we thaw the egg, it's basically the same as a fresh egg. So the pregnancy rates are the same. When, um, as long as we do ICSI, where we inject the sperm into the egg, fertilization rates are the same as fresh eggs. And so it's completely changed the game. Before vitrification, pregnancy rates for frozen eggs were extremely low, much lower than for fresh eggs. Egg freezing has revolutionized the field and um, thousands and thousands of women are now taking advantage of this. One big thing to remember is it is now standard of care for all cancer patients to have the option to freeze their eggs. So that's something I want everybody to know because I think it's important. A lot of cancer patients, these day, young women these days, are not really getting the option to consider egg freezing. So I hope you'll take that home as a message. So case any of your loved ones have to undergo that process to let them know that egg freezing is an option because cancer treatment can destroy your future fertility and egg freezing is a good option for cancer patients. Um, but egg freezing may not necessarily be for you and it can be expensive. Um, so I think the important thing is to be informed. But there are other things you can do to preserve your fertility. So um, it's not just about egg freezing. Like, you can quit smoking. Smoking will put you through menopause much earlier. You can be a healthy weight. Being overweight dramatically affects your fertility. Uh, you can try to have a healthy diet, get some exercise, get the recommended seven to eight hours of sleep at night. All these things are kind of much less expensive than egg freezing, but still can help preserve your fertility. I think the important thing is that you're here, you're listening to us talk tonight, um, so you're you know, being proactive and trying to make some decisions about your life, your future, and your health. And that's the important thing. And, and so getting informed. You know, egg freezing may not be for you, but what we want is for you to understand the process, to feel comfortable with it, and to feel like you can make an informed decision for yourself. Even if you decide not to do egg freezing, seeing your doctor, getting a checkup, maybe you have risk factors that put you at higher risk for future fertility issues. Are your periods irregular? Um, do you have a family history of endometriosis? Do you have a family history of premature ovarian failure? Typically, we feel like maybe between 30 and 35 might be the ideal age to freeze your eggs. Less than 30, maybe you're still a little bit on the young side, although you're probably going to be able to freeze a lot of great eggs. Um, that's a very personal decision, and I think that's something that deserves a conversation with a specialist, a reproductive endocrinologist who has experience in egg freezing. Um, but if you have some um, 
medical issues, like a severe chronic medical uh, mm -hmm. disease or family history, uh, you may want to consider freezing your eggs sooner rather than later. So those are all things that I urge you, you know, don't be shy. We, you know, there are a lot of specialists out here. If your GYN doesn't feel comfortable talking about those issues, you want to see a board certified reproductive endocrinologist so you can be, become informed and, you know, take charge of your own health. Details, practical aspects. I'm going to have my partner, an amazing reproductive endocrinologist, Dr. Stephanie Marshall Thompson, uh, come up and talk about practical aspects, all the details you want to know about egg freezing.